Okay, hello everybody uh, and welcome to the latest in the phase three meets series. I'm absolutely delighted this week. You're going to enjoy this one. Um, I've got Wendy Muirhead with me um, and Wendy is the Vice President of Sales at Ceridian. So, hi Wendy, how are you doing? Hello. Are you good, you well? I am wonderful. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to see you today. No, honestly, it's it's my pleasure. I would say I normally ask, are you happy? But you're always happy. Every time I speak to you, you have this kind of beaming smile. Fantastic mindset. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's 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 all fake. It's, <laughs> now you know everybody. Now you know. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. Okay. Your face is a picture there. <laughs> Where do I go with this one? Yeah, no. <laughs> so cool. Why don't we start by you telling everyone a little bit about Ceridian and obviously the day four solutions and, and, and just kind of where you guys are at at the moment. Great, great. No, no, thank you. And it's honestly such a pleasure to be with you today. Thanks very much for having us. Um, well, so Ceridian, uh, I work at Ceridian. It's an absolute honour to work at Ceridian. I head up the European Business Unit um, and I'm responsible and accountable for growth across Ceridian Europe and also the customer experience because the customer is at the centre of everything that we do as an organisation. And so Ceridian, you mentioned already, we have our day four solution and, and Ceridian has been on a bit of a journey from 2012. Uh, a lot of people will know of Ceridian in the UK market for being a managed payroll or a bureau payroll technology yeah. company um, and service provider. And actually we've been on a journey since 2012. Uh, David Ossip, my chairman and CEO, uh, actually he was the founder of Dayforce. So if you've ever had the, the privilege of meeting with David or coming to one of our events, you'll see David actually do a demo on Dayforce. It is his baby. Um, and the teams have continued to develop Day Fours, and he sold Day Fours to Ceridian back in 2012. So it's really been Dayforce transforming what was Ceridian. Back in 2012, at the, the time of the acquisition, you know, Ceridian was an organization that was quite disparate, had lots of different yeah. functions, lots of different payroll channels, was um, known as a great tech tax engine in North America. Um, one of two great tax houses in North America. And um, they were with basically the changes from being privatized. They were reducing in their headcount. They were controlling their EBITDA by doing that um, and hemorrhaging customers because it was so fragmented. So David came into the business in 2012 with a real vision that we were going to focus on cloud technology and become okay. an intelligent HCM provider and be a global provider with that. And, and that's really the journey that Ceridian's been on. Uh, second thing was to really focus on culture. So, you know, everyone to live and breathe the cultural values yeah. as a global force around the world. And uh, it's incredible to see that uh, continue as we've went through the journey and as we continue to scale uh, across Europe and also worldwide. So it's, well, been, it's been a phenomenal journey. Thank you for that. A really good kind of solid background. And you, you, you touched upon kind of culture there. And, and one of the questions I wanted to ask you, so, so from the outside looking in, um, and for those of you who don't know, Phase 3 are a, a relatively new uh, Dayforce partner, Ceridian partner. Um, you seem to have an amazing team spirit. Um, I, obviously, I've, only ever, I've, I've seen that from kind of your, your, your team there, the sales team, and, and from what I see on LinkedIn and so on and so forth. Um, what 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 tips would you give people in terms of how to really achieve that uh, that that buy-in, that engagement, and that culture that you seem to have a you know you seem to have on lockdown really at, at Ceridian? Yeah, I mean, I, I, for for me personally, I I just have evolved what David's built. You know, David's vision was very much around we're all in it together as one global team to support yeah. our customers to achieve their goals. And so, you know, I, I, the way I look at it personally is that I'm just dovetailing into that vision mm -hmm. and really helping every individual to be their own accountable owner of the business. Everyone touches a customer at one point, whether you're in R&D, whether you're in facilities, whether you're in yeah. operations, whether you're in sales, everyone's in it together. 
and and I think that's that's always been a really beautiful thing about the the business like we're really supportive of one another um and yeah, day four day force actually helps you to achieve that so you know we actually measure everything in the technology um the technology actually makes me look like a good people manager because it keeps <laughs> me right and and it's really funny because when i've been building up the team here in in uh, europe um we've actually a lot of the guys have joined and they've said it's been the best onboarding experience yeah. and a lot of that is down to the technology keeping me right because when you're running about and obviously it's a bit different at the moment with the pandemic um but when you're running around you know it's hard when you're on planes trains automobiles to accept holidays and approve things yeah. and make sure people yeah. have done their train and doing your performance goals and cascading your performance goals and doing it while you're waiting for the plane to shut uh, and that's what Dayforce can do. So, you know, actually a lot of the technology helps you to really keep the teams educated, informed, uh, up to date, what's going on. They're front and center of, uh, you know, if they're focused on the customer, then, you know, they, they do a great job. And it's it's easy to keep that engagement level going when people feel that they have that accountability and responsibility for the customer too. No, oh, absolutely. I totally echo that. And and I think as well, do, 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 you, do you feel that the, the kind of enforced lockdown has um, has, has had a, a much more positive impact than you would have thought uh, at the start of lockdown on the team and on the engagement? Because that's what we're finding, um, not only in our team, but obviously I speak to loads of different people in team and they're getting to know their their, their employees better, maybe from a bit more of a personal point of view and their, their home life and being accommodating to that. Um, do, do you think that that's kind of had a positive effect in that in, in that regard on your, in your, your team? Yes, yes and no. I mean, if, if we look at the first part of that, um, I think everyone's been on a journey. Everyone has went on their own sort of emotional, mental health journey with COVID mm -hmm. and people are doing it at different points. So it's kind of like some people are lifted and they're coping really well and then other people are feeling a little bit more isolated. And so to the other point, be more personalized, everyone can see my home. You know, it's just, <laughs> if you get in a view of yeah. somebody's personal world, you know, like, it used to be taboo if the kids would make noise in the background and now it's yeah. kind of the common theme that people will be walking past or bringing coffee in and like half my team know how i have my coffee because my husband will bring it in and they'll shout for one yeah. too um so i do think that there is a lot more personal conversation because you're getting a view into you know meetings networking with people you, you're definitely getting a view into somebody's actual life yeah. But I, I do think there's been an emotional journey yeah. and I think it's been and for those I think everyone's dealt with it in their own way. The way I've kind of looked at it was to just keep a real open dialogue going yeah. and to help people feel that they're connected and give them opportunity to have time to touch base. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we set up like on a Friday night, we set up a, a virtual cocktail hour where yeah. everyone would bring a beer and we sometimes it'd be fancy dress, sometimes it would just be a chat. <laughs> a lot of the global team would jump in. So you'd have people from Toronto, Minneapolis, you know, oh, wow. it was like a real mixed bag. Um, but it was it was just to give somebody, you know, another point of a conversation rather than it being a business related conversation, but giving people the freedom to have a chat. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's been Zoom hell, um, you yeah. know, in back to back meetings from very early in the morning, sometimes till very late at night. Yeah. And so actually, particularly when you're speaking with the states and stuff as well, obviously, you have to kind of adapt the time to that, don't you? Yeah. 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 And, and the Aussies, you know, I'll often yeah. start my day having a catch up with the Aussies and <laughs> my good friends down under. Um, and then, you know, the, the day continues. And I think because people know you're in lockdown, you're more yeah. available. And yeah. and yeah. sometimes that hasn't been the case because your diary is maxed from from first minute in the morning when you wake up to, to last thing at night. Yeah. And so I think that journey, just having that accessibility, um, making it, you know, we're all one team you don't yep. need to just speak to me but actually is there other people that you can reach out to my bosses other team managers other people in the business and just encouraging that sort of virtual coffee take take time yeah. if you need it yeah. you know and keep that work-life balance 
we no, talk absolutely. to Ceridian. Sorry, sorry, Asa. No, 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 you carry on, you carry on. No, I was just going to say, we talk a lot about making work life better. Um, and, you know, before lockdown happened, you know, I could easily be sitting on a Zoom on, on my phone and my team could be waiting for the kids to come out of school and the client might be waiting yeah. for the school gate. And that's the great thing about technology. If you can have that, that accessibility, you can literally have your office on your phone. And Dayforce enables you to, to do that with making work life better. And the, the difference is there's no travel. So yeah. it's been it's a different. great thing not having to get up at 4 a.m. to get the flight <laughs> to go down south. But equally, you know, it's um, it's just about making sure that people have that time out. Go for a run. Yeah. Go and do your exercise. Take time with the kids. Yeah. yeah, and and don't get locked into doing Zoom hell because everyone will get exhausted working that way. So whole, make sure you're really careful with your own time. And there's a whole piece around um, Zoom fatigue, isn't there, as well, that I've been reading a lot about and Teams fatigue and people kind of just getting a little bit sick and tired of it all, really. And and I've, again, members of our team yesterday on our kind of weekly call were saying that they're actually missing the travelling. Yeah. They're, they're looking forward to getting up at four, four, well, maybe not four, but five, six o'clock in the morning and getting to the office or whatever, wherever they're going, travelling to a customer site. So I think there is that kind of element of all these things that we've maybe disliked for such a long time. Mm -hmm. um, actually, now you're thinking, oh, God, I'd do anything to have that back. Mm. Well, I think... <laughs> I bumped into a neighbor actually when I was walking my dog and and just actually and we've been on a personal level we've been doing like zooms at the weekend just to keep everyone connected and it's incredible having a zoom games night at 6 30 on a Saturday makes you have organization because yeah. if you didn't have another yeah. Saturday I would have another else to do but actually just seeing the person without being on a screen and actually having a conversation, yeah. social distancing, obviously, but yeah. you know, it, it does make a difference. And I think my team are feeling the same way. And I know that customers are very keen. And and actually that's that's the area where I'm probably gonna be cautious in, in terms of yeah. what I expect. And I'll be definitely partnering with my HR team to make sure that, you know, we've got the right equipment, we've got the right masks, we've got yep. all the PPE, you know, and what's the restrictions in travel because it's different in mm -hmm. Scotland, in England. And, yeah, absolutely. you know, and it's, there's a lot of confusion, I think, out there. Not to mention payroll confusion. That's been one of the main things that I've heard of in the payroll industry yeah, is the yeah. amount of different legislation. But but that's that's where I'm kind of looking to work and partner with my HR team. But yeah, it'd be good to get back to some kind of normal. Absolutely. Absolutely. You you touched upon it earlier in terms of managing your kind of team's mental health and well being and work life balance. Can you just share with us um which, which uh, kind of initiatives Ceridian have have implemented to to kind of help towards achieving those goals of of, 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 of mental health. Well, we've always like really strongly, um, you know, advocated for inclusion, diversity. We have EAPs, so you know, we've always had those things. And one of the things that we did launch was the Ceridian Kids Club. And oh, I, brilliant. I, I okay. nominated a couple of my team members because that's one thing. I have three children, but, you know, more children you have, the more that you like to travel. Um, but um, we do have the Ceridian Kids Club and, you know, some of my team have had their kids engaged and they do like lunch and learns and they've done like uh, one of them did a whole thing on Harry Potter. It was almost like a show and tell and get a little <laughs> Ryan to stand up at eight and present to the whole of the Ceridian team and their families has been a really good channel because it gives people gets the kids involved <laughs> but it gives people something to get the kids into so that yep. it can help them get some work done as well so that's been great and that's really started from um from the start of lockdown i did this for my team where my team are called team awesome as you know because you've joined us with some of our, our sessions but i did little gifts because i was like my team all have gifts to give but um, yeah. I sent a series of little gifts to them. Uh, it could be like a power charger where it's power up with Team Awesome or some cleaner where it was like, keep it clean, Team Awesome. But yeah. actually, do you know what? Yes, it's a global, you know, disastrous situation uh, in terms of health. And, you know, but there's actually a lot of, of that we can do to look after each other, look after Absolutely. our communities, get involved and and keep our spirits up. 
and yeah. and I wanted them because some of the team are on their own some of them are like balancing young kids you know and, and some people are worried about elderly parents and everyone's got things going on but they're not alone Mm -hmm. And and I wanted them to feel like they always had that opportunity to, to yeah. reach out and that they are part of the team. So keep calm. Take a minute to pause. Don't react. Yeah. Because once you take that moment, I actually think it's been a great thing for me personally, because I've really enjoyed actually not being in a rush. Like, yeah. especially Monday to Friday, I've got a busy diary. But actually, it's Saturday, Sundays, and not having a full pack, you know, running after the kids and shopping and various yeah. things actually for me it's been great because I've actually just been able to take a moment pause appreciate what I'm doing and you know actually enjoying that and and I'm going to take that into my new normal you know actually and, and some of the best ideas come when you have that kind of peace of mind and kind of you're not rushing you're not going here you literally you could just be sat there and that's certainly the case with me really strange random times of the day i'll get a uh, what i think is a good idea it might not always turn out to be but you know and and, and kind of innovation ha occurs when you're least expecting it really and, and and when you're just relaxed and i think what's happened even even this series you know this probably would not have happened had we been in the usual going to the office coming back and and, and not in lockdown mm -hmm. a because i probably wouldn't have had the idea and b as you said, I probably wouldn't have had access to the people that I've been speaking to because they would be so busy. They wouldn't be able to spare the prep time, the this time, you know, the the, the, the half an hour, 45 minutes to record. Mm -hmm. So I, I, yeah, absolutely agree with that point. Absolutely agree with that point. And, and I think, um, you know, when your mind is just relaxed and you're, 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 you're switched on, amazing things can happen. Oh, 100%. Uh, not only that, but when you actually take that, and then you collaborate with others and it becomes, you know, that yeah. that good idea can become genius. I mean, that's that's like the Ceridian Kids Club. That started yeah. from a suggestion on a webinar because we we went into over communicating because yeah. there was so much change, because there was so much going on, because we went into total virtual working worldwide. We we invoked yeah. that on, I think it was the 12th of March. We literally, we were together on the 10th, and then two days later, we invoked it. Yeah. But we still went live with customers. We we already were virtual and had the capability anyway, and we're, we're ready if something happens. <clears throat> but actually, you know, being able to still it's business as usual, you know, yeah. still deliver. Still, In fact, some of our customers have said, thank God we went live, because if we hadn't have went live, we wouldn't have been able to talk to all of these thousands of people that are in furlough. Yeah. Some of our customers yeah. have been able to do furlough and do it in a couple of hours, whereas other organizations we've spoke to have really struggled to Good manually point. make that happen. And that's the power of what we've got. So some customers have paused, other customers have accelerated. And so there's been yeah. this whole reprioritization because all of a sudden cloud is now, I need it. It's not any longer a nice to have. It's a strategic priority for the board. Yeah. And, and we are in a position that we already have it. We've got 4,300 customers worldwide you know we've got great capability and flexibility at how we can support and and that in fact we actually launched i think we talked about it before i said about at the start of covid we had been producing materials so if you go into ceridian.com you'll see yeah. on our website covid resources and actually we built that for our teams but our customers were looking for some help so we we helped them with that too and we released it to them and then David and the team, you know, and Lee, let's make it a market-wide thing. So yep. it's available for everyone. You don't have to be a Dayforce customer to have access to all of the learning portal that's got some great resources in there about how to balance work and kids, mental health, working virtually. There's tons of resource in there that's available for all. And if we can help any business in any way, whilst this is going on i think there's been a huge pull of together not just yeah. in in the industry in the payroll industry i've seen more collaboration in this time than i've ever yeah. seen in my whole career and i spent most of my career in in global hr and pay and so that that for me has been a really incredible thing to watch 
Um, and, you know, I hope that we don't lose that. I hope that we continue to build on that collaboration within the industry to yeah. help one another as we continue to change and grow as we come through this stronger. Yeah, it's one of the things I talked about in a, in, in a previous video as well. And and my, my hope that it, it's been the whole community feel from a from a personal kind of home point of view, but also as you absolutely quite right, say from a work point of view, the collaboration, the good feeling, the helping each other out, the, the, the kind of, you know, the spotlight on the payroll industry, which has historically kind of just been, you know, kind of forgotten about and you, you press a button and everybody gets paid type approach. But, you know, we all know that's not the case particularly now with furlough and obviously the furlough changes that are coming up in the next few months as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I really hope we don't revert back to type um, when, if we ever get back to whatever the new normal is. And and I, I think that's one of our challenges to to try to ensure that we don't just all go back to the way we were and and kind of not being so perhaps inclusive and, and, and uh, not collaborating as much as we have been doing for the last few months. Um, so. But I think on that that's where you make the difference you know in terms of this platform what you're doing and you know and we'll be supportive of that you know i think actually how we drive forward out of this and how we continue to collaborate in the industry and continue yeah. to network and, and work together that is you know how we'll drive that through and everyone can contribute to that and and I think that's the one thing about you know another great thing about this whole COVID situation and social media gives everybody a voice and yeah. everyone can have yeah. that opportunity yeah. to make that change and sustain that change and keep it so it's you know for me it's a big empowering tool that you can yeah. encourage everybody to to keep going on the journey yeah. um, and this is a great a great feature a great spotlight so you know well done for having the idea <laughs> and um it's and not that it's not the most original I, i'd like to say i was first to market but i don't i don't think i was <laughs> <laughs> but it is good you i just want to go back a, a couple of steps there you, you talked about obviously 4300 customers on a, on a kind of global footing um what were the challenges for you uh from from, from your point of view kind of to to manage that in terms of ensuring that everyone was spoken to or, or you know that you say all of a sudden everyone's going into an office or going to customer sites and switch the next day they're not what were the kind of big challenges you had to kind of overcome there well i mean first of all i mean we've got an incredible team in our in our strategy team who are responsible for disaster recovery business continuity so we already had very sophisticated plans yeah. what the team did at the very start of the year when this pandemic was starting to really wreak noise in asia pack you know we we doubled down on all of the detail in the disaster recovery they worked with all of the partners they looked yeah. at their plans they made sure that we were in a really robust situation should we have to switch on virtual and so that plan was actually sort of they double clicked on that plan very early on in the year and so a lot of that prep work was done organize you know the teams that didn't have access to, to virtual laptops and virtual working yeah. IT were all over that and so everyone was encouraged to just every night take your laptop home yeah. and so we were kind of ahead of the curve when yeah. it actually came um, and so, you know so it's been business as usual I haven't really had a challenge there I think that okay. the most challenge that that I've personally seen is um is just making sure that the teams have their downtime i mean i gave my team a ride this week for not taking holidays i'm like <laughs> guys you've got to have your time i think because people haven't um you know people aren't traveling anywhere yeah, yeah. i did take my two weeks over easter because i was meant to be in disneyland florida it turned out to be disneyland paisley um <laughs> where we painted the fence but you know i took my two weeks off and so there's been you know i'm trying to encourage the team to to take their time and to switch off because it's amazing how you know when you are working from home you know and you've got that accessibility and people know that you're available because you're at home you know it's 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 easy for people to slip into a bad habit of constantly working so i think my biggest challenge has just been encouraging that you know you work really hard you're working really well the customers are really appreciating all the support and the effort yeah. it's making sure that you also look after yourself 
Um, because if you're knackered yeah. at the end of this, then you're no use to anybody if you're going to burn out. And so actually yeah. really addressing that and being in front of that, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to encourage the team to take some time. And it's, you know, whether it's in lockdown or whether it's in the new social distancing with the sort of, you know, local travel, I'm, I'm really trying yeah. to help them to do that. That's, I suppose, my biggest challenge. But that's probably a good thing if my team are complaining it's that good... I'm giving them a row for, for yeah. taking a holiday, you know, like take Absolutely. it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Life is good if that's your, if those are your challenges. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So look, everyone's well. Customers are happy. You know, we're continuing to grow at incredible speed across the world. Um, you know, I, it's, I always say it's an absolute honor to be where I am and work with the teams yeah. that I work with because they're incredible people, highly engaged, dedicated to the end of everything about what's important to the customer. And so when you work in such an, a great, amazing yeah. team, you know, it's it's a gift it's a real gift and so you asked at the beginning why am i so happy that is honestly the truth you know i'm i'm in a really great position that i'm supported throughout the entire business right from david offset right throughout the organization globally and you know it never feels like it's just me you know it really is it's the whole team pulling together in one direction for our customers and and our customers are part of that and i love when i get the customers on stage and i love you know having product councils and i'm meeting with two customers later on today and that's that's the best bit about the role is really getting deeply deeply involved with them how can they be successful and you know when you do a job you love you can't you can't help but be happy do you know so, what that is that that is your your you're very fortunate um and and you do a job that you love but i think you're kind of under playing the value that you add to that there as well i think um clearly as as and i've been in sales for for a long time myself you know to have such a engaged uh, productive committed dedicated team um who you know providing results so the numbers are there as well um is it, it comes from the top down it, it, it doesn't necessarily go from the bottom up and I think you and, and obviously all the, your kind of co, your, your senior leadership team at Ceridian have done a fantastic job uh, to get you guys where you are. Um, and what what advice would you give as a, as a sales leader, someone who's got a lot of advi- uh, experience, sorry, in this industry, what advice would you give maybe uh, smaller organizations uh, who perhaps don't have that level of support and kind of maybe uh, the culture and stuff? What, what kind of advice would you give those guys in terms of how to manage their sales teams um, as we progress um, out of lockdown, well, hopefully out of lockdown into this kind of new normal. Yeah, I think I think what I would advise is uh, look, always keep it simple because if you overcomplicate right. strategy, yeah. it's 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 hard to execute well. You can't yeah. conquer the world if you're after world domination. Look at what you can <laughs> conquer and make it achievable. I'll cross that um, off the list then, Wendy. World domination, yeah, world domination. That might be the end goal, but you might not get it overnight. Um, but it's, it's. I think it's, if you really highly educate your team and you empower yeah. your team and you're yeah. focused on the goal, then, you know, you look at what your plan is and you keep your plan simple. For teams, I, I've worked, uh, I've been speaking a lot to people in the industry, as, as have you, you know, to see yeah. how things are a pan and I and you know there's some organizations that have furloughed their teams there's others who have furloughed their entire teams um and you know it's what I would what I would suggest is whilst you're on furlough you know you're not working it's like what a word time word that's all of a sudden became really popular um you know you're not working that's the whole point of furlough um but you can still educate you know i would i would be double down on educating people double down on where are you different in the market where can you shine your light that can be that unique element and how can your people help bring that education to the market as well and so you know that would be my advice you know for us it's been so busy like i don't think i've ever worked as hard as i've been working because it's been busy and and I'm expecting that to continue. That's the reason yeah. why I'm pushing for holidays now, so I don't have everyone off in December. <laughs> I joke. Um, but you know, like really genuinely, I, I I've got I've got you know 
great aspirations for where we're going to go as a business yeah. and you know it's the only way is up world domination we are looking to to help our customers to achieve world domination in their businesses Brilliant. and you know that's that's really what we're looking to do help our customers to be great and you know as long as your team are educated informed and highly supportive of what they are trying to do then you'll achieve it and that will happen. It's just a matter of time. Um, but but that that would that would pretty much be it. I love that. I love that. I made a couple of notes while you were saying that. Empower, education, focus, and simplicity. Yeah. I think if you follow those rules, you can't go far wrong, can you? I, I'd like to hope so. Brilliant. That's what I'd be doing. It's been going all right brilliant. so far. <laughs> I mean, I think I've got to say, I think the future looks fantastic uh, and, and very bright for for Ceridian. Um, we're loving being on that journey with you guys. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to, to helping you grow and of course you help us grow, vice versa. Um, so thank you so much for your time today. I really, really appreciate it. We're gonna move on to the, the I'm, I'm renaming it the not so, not so quick fire round because it's never oh, quick. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna ask you a couple of random questions. Uh, I'm gonna have to look at my sheet for this. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a couple of random, a few random questions and just answer as quick as you can. If we want, if we go into a few details about each of it, then each of the answers, and that's fine as well. All right, uh, but this worry. is just kind of, yeah, let's get to know Wendy a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> this is probably the scary bit. The scary bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, best thing about lockdown? Uh, being at home with the kids. Yeah, you could probably say that's the worst thing about lockdown as well. <laughs> no, um, I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's 50-50. <laughs> um, what's your what's your favourite app? Day Force. Oh, all um, right. Okay, if it's not work related, not work related, Day Force genuinely is my favourite app for getting it done. Um, BBC iPlayer to catch up with the standards. Oh, you've taken out my next question. I can't believe that. That's the, how weird is that? EastEnders or Coronation Street? Oh, EastEnders, hands down, every time. Love me, love EastEnders. Do you, really? Do you watch it? I, I don't watch soaps. I've not watched. I used to watch EastEnders. I used to love EastEnders. I just don't watch. Don't, don't watch TV, generally. I don't get time normally because the kids yeah. dominate it. But if I'm on a plane, it genuinely is BBC iPlayer. Download EastEnders. And that's why I catch up with all my... If you're on a plane, you can't do anything can't else. Do anything and that's that's, uh, still, that's my Eastie's viewing. It's Phil Mitchell still in it. He is, yeah. Still going, my yeah. goodness. Love Who'd have it. thought? Who'd have thought? <laughs> okay. Um, favorite Netflix show? Uh, oh, it's got to be The Tiger King recently. I found that hilarious. Carol Baskin. <laughs> that, that, that was hilarious. I mean, quite sad. And, and I didn't, I, you know, obviously I don't endorse any kind of animal in captivity. But I was just totally fascinated by everything that was going on in that show. It was bizarre, wasn't it? it, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Craziness. Craziness. Um, what's your favourite music genre? Oh, rock. Rock? Are you a rock and roller, Wendy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? No, what, what's your favourite band? Rock and roll band. Uh, well, there's so many, but uh, I always say, if whatever you listen to, so I love Aerosmith, I love Queen, I love Metallica. Okay. Um, yeah. Really? My you're really? hardcore. <laughs> well, my, my husband's into real hardcore. I will. I don't do this very often, but that is by. Oh like, wow! Uh, and that that is three deep. So there wow. is a lot of music in this household. You saw the mess of my uh, office there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Favorite sport? Uh basketball because my kids play it, uh, and I'm a basketball mom, so don't really understand okay. it. Okay, I saw the. Um, I was watching the Last Dance. Um, not the last dance, what's it called? Last dance, the oh, Michael, Jordan. Michael Jordan documentary. Yeah, what's the last dance? Not yet. My husband's, I think you're right. Yeah, my I husband's think you're been watching that, but uh, my, my third son is called Jordan after Michael Jordan. Really, that's wow. how much this house loves basketball. You can't live in the west of Scotland, and we don't like football, so we do basketball instead. It keeps I, us out of a lot of other family problems. <laughs> I, I didn't know much about basketball, to be fair, growing up. I, I, you know, I, I knew about Michael Jordan. I'd have probably had a, I had a pair of Jordan trainers or something, um, but I didn't know too much about them until I saw that documentary, and it's actually fascinating, fascinating to see, how, you know, to learn more about Michael Jordan. Obviously, the, the other guy, Scottie Pippen, and um, Rodman and all the other kind of supporting cast as well um, and it kind of looks kind of 
quite lonely really now in the documentary he looks kind of like you know almost like regrets the way he was I don't know it, it, it's very subjective I suppose but yeah. to reach know, top to of the it. game like he did honestly wow well, uh, well I won't give it my, away I won't give my it away son, um, my son always like loves the fact that his name's over everything sports wise because it's the trainers the t-shirts yeah. the clothes you know Nike Jordan and so he's like it's all mine they're all named after me so that, that that seven year old has uh, has got a lot to live up to. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. Honestly, you've been absolutely a delight to speak to, Wendy. I really, I do enjoy our conversation generally, but this is uh, put it out on video. You're honestly, you're you're fantastic. I wish you every success uh, in the future from a personal point of view, and of course, Ceridian. Final plug. Get your plug in for for uh, for Ceridian, Wendy, before we uh, before we end the recording. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this. We totally value your partnership uh, for you and the team. And so it's totally mutual. Um, and actually, I think that's what makes us different because we really genuinely partner with our customers, with our friends in the industry. And, and that's really what makes us quite a unique proposition as an organization. And that we hope to continue to grow together. So that that's Lovely. that's a mutual plug there. Thank so. you. Thank you so much. I'll, um, I'll, I'll send you a check for that later on. <laughs> 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 brilliant thank you again so much really enjoy speaking to you always and uh yeah look forward to the next time thank you take care okay and take care see bye you bye-bye